How to raise business capital. When it comes to raising business capital, there are several ways that you can go about this. But in this video, I'm going to be discussing three of those ways. The first way is by raising it through friends and family. Those are the individuals that are the closest to you. Those are the individuals that you already have that trust, know, and like factor from them. Those are the individuals that love you and want to see you succeed. So why not invite those individuals to contribute to your new startup company? So the way you want to do this is strategically by throwing a business shower. What is a business shower? It's just like a baby shower. It's just like a wedding shower where you bring a group of people together, your friends and family, your loved ones, your associates, your coworkers, people from church, you know, former friends, whoever you can think of. You bring these individuals to an event style place where you offer food, you offer beverages, and you give a short presentation of your company. So you can have a business plan there for them to see. But what you're going to do is you're going to give them a snapshot, a synopsis of what your startup company is all about. And if you've already been operating your business, then you can actually let them know what your, you know, beginning revenue is and what your projected revenue is going to be. These individuals, they like you, they love you, and they trust you. So what they're going to be doing and what you're going to be collecting are donations. So these are not loans. These are not, you know, grants, right? These are donations. They come, they buy a ticket to the event. So let's say that it's $50 and you invite 100 people. That's $5,000 that you just raised for your business. At the event, you could also be doing a raffle. You could be doing, um, you know, giveaways of your products or your services. So they can pay to be in the raffle. So a business shower, it's new, it's vibrant, it's up and coming, and people want to attend these type of events more often. So that's your first way of bringing, raising capital into your business. The second way is crowdfunding. So crowdfunding is very similar to the business shower, but you're going to do it on a bigger scale and you're going to do it with people that you don't know. These are strangers. These are your neighbors. These are individuals that are maybe not even in your state. You can use platforms like Kickstarter. You can use other platforms like Fund and Grow. You can use platforms like Start Engine. These are crowdfunding platforms and they assist you to get registered with the SEC so that you are able to collect money from unaccredited investors. So what are unaccredited investors? Those are individuals that have a lower net worth, usually typically under 250,000 in yearly revenue. And it depends on how much they want to invest as well. But you can also have accredited investors invest as well. So you can have a mixture of both. Back in the days before crowdfunding, only accredited investors were allowed to invest. Why? Because, you know, the, the Fed, they thought that only accredited investors that made a certain amount of money were qualified and that they were informed and that they, you know, would 
um, be taking less of a risk when it comes to investments because they made more money. They had that threshold. Gone are those days. So a crowdfunding platform will allow you to raise capital through people who want to invest that don't make as much money, but they're ready to get their foot in the door. They're ready to dip their toe in the water. And you can go as low as $300, $500, $1,000, whatever your minimum is. And you can have a large maximum too. So whatever, you determine how much you want to raise. You can determine, hey, I want to raise $5,000, or hey, I want to raise $50,000, or I want to raise a million dollars. It's up to you. But that's a good way of raising capital for your startup business. The last way is the most traditional way, which is applying for loans. So applying for loans is tied into your credit. And you can choose to either apply for loans that only look at the business and so they require your EIN number and they look at your business credit through Dun & Bradstreet and Experion. Or you can choose to leverage your personal credit, become a personal guarantor for your business. They will take a look at your personal credit and see, okay, yes, they have a good credit history, so we are going to extend them this fifty dollars to $100,000 loan for their company. Now, there's two banks that I wanna tell you about, and those two banks actually have a no-doc program, which means that you don't have to give them bank statements, you don't have to give them a, um, an 1120 filing for your company, so they don't require that much documents. No docs means no docs. The first one is PNC. So they have a lot of good programs and products for new businesses. But like I said, you have to leverage your personal credit. The second one is Truist. Truist has been buying up a lot of these other banks like Regions like bb &T. and so they're merging and they're coming out with new products all the time. But you can qualify for as high as $50,000 without any documentation needed. All you need to do is apply, and I would recommend you apply in person, and I would also recommend that you open up a business account with them, start establishing a financial relationship with this bank because later down the line you can get a credit card or you can get you know a higher loan so those are the two banks that i would tell you to get started with when it comes to raising capital for your new business So later on in this section, we're gonna be talking about grants. We're gonna be talking about how to start your crowdfunding, how to do your business showers, and different products of business funding. I'll see you in the next video.